Today, we will focus on some of the research projects under the Omic Technologies for Health, for Health Research Program. As mentioned by Dr. Montoya, our discussion will hopefully show us the importance of generating knowledge on Filipino genetics in the context of healthcare. Exploring genomics for health can help us provide health solutions and interventions that are more suited and potentially more effective for our countrymen. Moving forward to the highlight of today's press conference, let us hear some updates on the Council's projects on Omic Technologies for Health. Let us welcome to the floor our DOSD Secretary, Fortunato de la Peña. Good morning, Secretary. Good morning, and uh, please, uh, uh, I have actually pre-recorded my presentation, so there is a set of uh, PowerPoint materials that I would like to present. So good morning to everyone, and uh, please uh, uh, go, go with me as I uh, walk you through in the developments in uh, omics. Under Secretary Ruena Cristina Guevara, DOST Under Secretary for R&D, to Dr. Jaime Montoya, the Executive Director of the Philippine Council for Health Research and Development. To our project leaders, Dr. Maria Ruth Pineda Cortel, Dr. Reynaldo Garcia, Dr. Eva uh, Cuchonco de La Paz, and Dr. Jacqueline Dominguez. And to our moderator, Dr. Sheria Lane de Paz Silava. To project team members, and of course, to our media friends, good morning. And thank you for joining us in another Talakayang Heart Beat. Today, allow me to introduce some of our ongoing and uh, completed projects among many of our initiatives under the Omic Technologies for Health. First, let me briefly introduce Omic's program as one of the priority R&D areas of the DOST PCHRD. According to literature, there is an increasing evidence that differences in the genetic makeup of each individual can impact their overall health quality. Our genetic makeup also holds clues on how certain diseases will progress over time. Using omics, the study of the Filipino genome, uh, which is the entire genetic material of the Filipino, will reveal a wealth of information which can lead to developing better ways and technologies in disease diagnosis, management, treatment, and prevention. The knowledge that will be gained from looking into the genes and extending this to different biomolecules of the Filipino can ultimately lead to the development of better, more personalized medicines and therapies for optimum individualized treatment tailored for the Filipinos. Realizing these benefits, the DOST PCHRD has put premium investment on omics research and development for health. Sabi nga nila, para sa lunas na sakto sa Pilipino, which is the tagline of omics program. Ultimately, with the with omics program, we aim to utilize omic technology platforms to generate meaningful information which can lead to the development of personalized or precise medicines, diagnostics, therapeutics, and a support to health and clinical practice guidelines and policies of the Philippines. With genomics, we can check whether the drugs we are giving really works for us and even develop our own medicines that will fit us better. Genomics can also help develop more affordable diagnostic kits that can diagnose diseases early on, like dengue or malaria, so that early intervention can be given and therefore save more lives. On a larger scale, genomic information helps in monitoring disease outbreaks or epidemics, which is crucial 
in decision making of our public health officials. The best example for this is the sequencing of SARS-CoV-2 virus being supported by the DOST and the PCHRD. Through omics, we aim to develop new health products and services and to strengthen the health clinical practice guidelines and policies of our country. Mga lunas na sakto sa Pilipino. The priority areas for health in omics are based on the top 10 causes of mortality and morbidity among Filipinos based on the data by the Department of Health as well as other important health, health aspects. This includes number one, non-communicable diseases with increasing public burden such as cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, and cancers. Number two, infectious diseases such as AIV, TB, influenza, dengue, leptospirosis, sepsis, neglected tropical diseases, and COVID-19. Third, diseases affecting nutrition, maternal, and child health. Fourth, neurological, neurodegenerative, mental health conditions of significance in the country. Fifth, rare diseases such as rare genetic disorders like XDP and metabolic syndromes. And lastly, applications of genomics in human forensics and ethnicity studies. From 2013 to 2020, the estimated funding support provided by the DOST, Philippine Council for Health Research and Development, for genomics or omics health R&D projects is at 995 million pesos. DOST, PCHRD, has put investment on projects for priority conditions in the Philippines, as mentioned in the previous slide as well as in the establishment of the Philippine Genome Center and its satellite facilities in Visayas and Mindanao. The PGC provides high-quality and ultra-modern sequencing and analytical services to the Philippine scientific community. By next month, September, we will be inaugurating the DOST-funded PGC Protein Proteomics and Metabolomics Facility, which is expected to expand the world-class services and capabilities of the center. Also included in the areas supported by the PCHRD are researches on bioinformatics and systems biology, as well as the development of novel technologies for therapeutics. In addition, Investment have been poured on researches on genomics and its applications to forensics and ethnicity. Among our completed and ongoing projects, let me share with you this project led by Dr. Jacqueline Dominguez of the Institute of Neurosciences of St. Luke's Medical Center at Global City. FTD or pronto temporal dementia is one of the common cause of the early onset dementia. It has a strong genetic component and 40% of FTD patients have a family history. However, the genetic component has not been studied in Filipinos. This project titled Familiar Aggreg Familial Aggregation Study on FFTD, or Filipino Prontotemporal Dementia, is the first known study for familial aggregation in prontotemporal dementia. It generally aims to, to determine the genetic profile of FTD in a Filipino family and characterize the clinical imaging and biomarker profile of the family. So as I said, clinical, uh, radiologic, and genetic profile. 
Next slide. Document in one year, the project team was able to enroll 16 participants to participate in the study. The project was able to document two families with strong family history of FLTD and found mutation in six members of one family, which is first in Asia. In both families, cognitive, neurophysiologic, and neuroimaging data were consistent with clinical findings observed in members with the disease. The project concluded that asymptomatic and mild symptomatic members already had characteristics similar to those with strong symptoms of the disease. This could be used as good biomarkers for the disease. Our second project was led by Dr. Reynaldo Garcia and implemented by the Philippine Genome Center and the National Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology in UP Diliman. The program had two component projects. Project one was led by Dr. Eva Maria Cochonco de La Paz and project two was led by Dr. Garcia. The EGFR signaling pathway is one of the most important cellular processes in cancer studies. Mutations in the proteins involved in this pathway are usual prime suspects in the proliferation of cancer cells, such as colorectal cancer. However, it is noted that some patients do not respond to standard anti-EGFR therapy. Overall, the program aimed to screen mutations in the genes involved in the downstream signaling pathways in colorectal cancer patients. More so, it aimed to conduct functional analysis on novel mutations in order to provide clinically relevant biomarkers that can be translated to commercial test kits for predicting drug response to anti-EGFR therapy. Upon looking at mutations in the aforementioned genes of 90 Filipino colorectal cancer patients, results showed the existence of ethnicity-specific nuances in the mutational landscape of CRC patients. Strengthening the need to look at a specific treatment strategies depending on the type of mutations seen in a patient. Moreover, 14 promising novel and unstudied mutations have undergone functional assays and were identified to be related to disease risk and development of colorectal cancer among Filipinos. Results from the program are seen to pave the way towards the development of diagnostic tests that can predict drug response or efficacy prior to actual treatment. Furthermore, data from the program can potentially be valuable in developing new therapeutic technologies, specifically for Filipino colorectal cancer patients. Currently, the most common measurement to diagnose gestational diabetes mellitus or GDM in the Philippines is through the oral glucose tolerance test, which is usually done during the third trimester of pregnancy, the time when insulin resistance starts to develop in pregnant women and the gestational diabetes mellitus can be clinically diagnosed. However, this test is laborious, irreproducible, and inconvenient both for the patient and the laboratory. Aiming to fill significant gaps in understanding of GDM, considering the maternal characteristics of the pregnant women, and provide baseline prevalence of GDM among pregnant Filipino women, Dr. Maria Ruth Pineda Cortel and her team from the University of Santo Tomas implemented this study entitled 
blood and placental gene expression in gestational diabetes mellitus, potential identification, early biomarkers. During year one implementation, the project was able to exceed enrollment targets and collaboration with seven hospitals and clinics in Metro Manila was pursued. The project team also completed sample collection and performed two oral presentations. During year two implementation, the project continued to enroll patients, collect blood and placental samples for processing and data analysis. Although there were limitations put forth by the pandemic, the project was able to enroll new participants, collect blood and placental specimens from both newly enrolled and previously enrolled participants, and perform laboratory analysis. The project team also prepared articles which were accepted at the International Journal of Molecular Sciences and at the first Digital International Research Conference 2020, where they presented and also presented a lecture in a webinar on intermediary metabolism entitled Metabolic Insights. What I presented to you was just an introduction to the innumerable accomplishments of our projects under the omics program supported by the DOST and PCHRD. More of our innovations and health research efforts will be presented as we celebrate the upcoming 40th anniversary of PCHRD in March of 2022. As early as now, we are inviting you to get involved with our activities in the pipeline. I hope my presentation has sparked your interest to ask more questions to our program leaders who are here with us as panelists for today's conference. As I end my presentation, allow me to express my thanks to our Filipino researchers for their dedication and perseverance in finding scientific solutions to the country's most pressing health problems. We at the Department of Science and Technology are committed to support you in using your expertise to serve our Filipino people through scientific research. And I sincerely thank our media partners with us today for supporting science and health research and promoting our local innovations. Muli maraming salamat at nabiyayang araw sa ating lahat. Thank you very much, Secretary De La Peña, for the in-depth discussion on the objectives, intended impacts, as well as the latest updates on these projects. Indeed, we're able to look forward to the future of healthcare for Filipinos with these projects.